Welcome to Conscious Co-Creations, straight talk about the mind, body, business, and spirit. And I'm really excited today because today I have a wonderful dear friend called Elise Hicks. And me and her have been talking on Facebook for almost, uh, almost a year now. And we have actually finally, finally have gotten together on this wonderful forum called the Google Hangout. And so I'm really excited because I finally get to meet her face to face now. So welcome, Elise. I'm really excited about today. Thank you, Carly. I am too. I'm honored that you asked me to be on this. Yeah, I, I, and I we've talked to we, you know really it's I think it's almost been a year now. I mean, my father used to live in Marina del Rey, and I that's one of the things that drew me to you is because I saw that you were in Marina del Rey, California, and I've been in California on and off God since 2004. And I heard about your book, and could you share with me, I know you wrote this book with your husband, William, or your partner, William, and I would love for you to share with us a little bit about your book, and it, actually, I would love for you to share with us the title of your book. I always love to hear from other people the titles of their book, and would you share with us a little bit about the journey of your book, because I know the title has the journey in it. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, it, well, my husband, William, and I met back in 96. In a in live spring, so it was a very powerful transformational environment that we worked that we lived in, and the story really evolved on a trip to Palm Springs. We started kicking ideas around, and it's the human condition, in a nutshell. It's called Wings: The Journey Home. It's a uh, well, we wanted to weave every life lesson that we possibly could that we've learned on our journeys, on our paths, and uh, we've woven them throughout this inspiring tale. It's in the genre of Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Richard Bach is one of both of our favorites, and uh, we actually see it being in the animated film very soon, very soon. That's the next step for us. So before yeah. I continue, two things that really drew me to you about that was one is the fact that you have the journey in your title. And to me, life is an ever-evolving journey. And the second thing that drew me to you, because I actually did go through the book various times, was the fact that you weaved children and the evolution of our adult self and children into the book. And the fact that, you, as you mentioned, Jonathan Siegel. So, I mean, there were so many facets of your book that drew me. I mean, and, and there's just so many different layers. And Palm Springs. I could go on and on and on again. So, now continue. <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you. Because there were so many layers that drew me to you. You have no idea. So, now continue. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, I know uh, there are many reasons we've been drawn together, Carly. <laughs> and that I'm glad that that was one of the triggers for you. Um, you know, I feel that this time on Earth is so important, and I think it's important for us to remember who we are, and, yeah, you know, what would life be like if we actually could play? I mean, it's an amazing, amazing experience to be here, and, and yet it seems like so many of us come and we've forgotten who we are, and so... Uh, I know you and I have been definitely on that path, and I'm sure many others that are listening to this are as well. We, we've all, we're all magnificent beings, infinite creators, beings, and many of us have forgotten or, and are in the process of remembering. Um, when William and I were trying to figure out what to put on the back page or the back cover of the book, we it took us a couple of hours just kicking around ideas and finally he said why do we forget and I said so we can remember and that's you know the story is about an eagle who on his first day of flying is caught and injured in the first winds of a storm he spirals down to earth and lands in a haystack in a chicken yard with a wounded wing and amnesia and the story is is fun, lighthearted uh, metaphor of our condition, and it's really his journey to to remember who he is and uh, 
and also to value the friends that he has um, that he's gained along the way. There is so much more I could go into, but uh, everyone will just have to read the book for themselves and and enjoy. So me and most people don't know, you and I have actually talked at length. We've spent quite a bit of time the past couple of days in arranging this interview and so we've talked at length about a few things we did want to actually talk about in this interview. So let's get a little bit into that. So one of the things I wanted to bring up and is that we as adults, we forget to play. We watch children and children are constantly playing. And as they're playing, if you look at children really closely, they're learning while they're playing. Haven't you ever noticed that adults, we just don't play anymore? What do you think of that? I think we are so busy. <laughs> we found ourselves in this society, especially here in the U.S. or the Western world, we are so freaking busy. And I, I don't know, well, I do know about you, Carly. I know you're busy. I you know, I feel like 10 years ago we started saying, gosh, time is speeding up. And maybe that's a factor of us growing older. But uh, I have, I'm just coming off of the most intense six months of my life. And um, so I think we, many of us are distracted. We're doing our best to keep roofs over our heads and you know, keep balance with family and, and you know, have our personal nurturing time and, and it's, it's a dance that we do. So in that process, unless we have gentle reminders to keep us playful, um, unless we are by nature playful, lighthearted beings, uh, you know, for many of us it can be a challenge. I am so blessed that William keeps me, he keeps me young, he's nine years younger than I am, so it's, you know, a, it's the company I keep, I guess. He just uh, does his best to remind me to smell the roses, and, and uh, it's, he's a blessing. So you just said something there that was really important. Our environment, who we surround ourselves with, is so important. I have to say something else. These shows, this is playtime for me. A lot of people think I work, 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 and I do work. I work really, really hard, and I have to say, what you and I are doing right now, this to me is such playtime for me. I love what I do, and I have to tell everybody, you have to do what you love, because when you do what you love, even though it's hard work, I have to say, this brings such joy to me. This brings such love to my heart. This is playtime for me. I have, I get such joy out of this. I, I mean, seriously, can you not see the joy on my face right now? <laughs> I mean, like this is just like so much fun for me. So really, we have to, we have to get masterful at doing things that we love. We have to find a way to monetize and to do what we love. Now, I don't necessarily do these shows to monetize them because I don't monetize my shows. I do these shows because I love them and I do these shows to bring joy to other people. I, what I do for monetization is other things. These shows I do because I love them. So you have to find other things. I mean, yes, you can monetize shows. That's not why I do these. But anyways, that's a whole other subject. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to surround yourself, you know, like you said, William brings you joy. Surround yourself with things that bring you joy. You had music on before. Does that music bring you joy? Does the music you were listening to before bring you joy? Absolutely. Okay, so that's that's what people forget. If if the jazz music you were listening to before brings you joy, if William brings you joy, whatever it is that brings you joy into your life, do that. We need we need to we need to remember what brings us joy. And if you're not having joy in your life, you need to remember what brings you joy and do more of that. Why are we doing things that are making us miserable? I don't understand why we continue to do things that make us miserable. I don't do those things anymore. If things that make me miserable or make me miserable, they're no longer in my life. It's like, I don't want to be miserable. Do you want to be miserable? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm out on that one. Yeah. 
No, I agree. And you said something so powerful. It, uh, when we are aware of how we're feeling, when we really are in touch with with our bodies, with how we feel, we can notice, we can stop and notice and interrupt the, a pattern that might show up and, and replace it, perhaps with worrying about the future or thinking about the past. Either one of those is keeping us from being in this moment and out of our joy out of our bliss. So the more we can interrupt that and be in the moment, then we can we can just feel the life that is within us and that joy just I think it naturally bubbles up. You just look around and notice your cat or or your child or I don't know, whatever it is. So I just noticed something in you that really just shifted. And so two things has happened with you. One is, where is your cat? I'm missing your cat right now. And two is, I really just noticed something really shift in your field that was really beautiful. And I just noticed it in your face as well when you just said, you, I just said something really impactful. So I invite you to just feel whatever that shift was because you're literally your whole facial expression just shifted and your eyes just shifted. So I just invite you just to feel whatever it is that you felt in your heart and just sit with that for a second and just really be with that. Because it was really amazing. Your whole your whole body language, your whole physiology just shifted in that moment. When you when you said that I just said something that was really powerful. And it is true. When when we know that we're we're in a pattern or in a rut or or we or we feel we know when we're not in a space that's we know when we know. Like you said. If we're doing something that's not right, or not, I don't like that word. When we're doing something that's not making us feel good, we know. And when we're doing something that brings us massive joy, like William, or the jazz music, or for me, doing these shows, or eating something that's really healthy and yummy, or eating something that maybe is making us feel guilty, we know. So the thing is to, is to again, recognize it, not beat ourselves up for it, and then go, okay, I recognize it in that moment, and tomorrow I'm going to do something anew, or or make an agreement with myself that tomorrow I'm going to start anew. Don't feel guilty. Don't beat yourself up. Just recognize it in that moment, and tomorrow is a new day. So, and by the way, I love your cat. I love cats. Oh, thank you. Is he behind me? I heard. I heard. I heard the cat talking. That's why I brought up the cat. I could hear the cat. So funny. I think no. he's he. Yeah, I didn't drag him out. It's his nap time right now. So. Anyways, I just felt I felt your. I don't know. I just felt this. I don't know. Beautiful um, mm. space. So I just wanted to honor that and recognize that in that moment. Thank you, love. Yeah. You're such a sweetheart, yeah. Carly. I I want to acknowledge you right now because you have created such a beautiful space for your guests to come and play with you. Oh, thank you. I love to play. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that is, you know, when I think about what would heaven on earth look like, I think play would be a great component of that. And so thank you for that. Thank you. So, so you what, what I'd like to, where I'd like to go in with your book as well, you're talking about the ego, the, not the ego, the eagle, um, and having his little wounded, you know, wing, and and it, it's going on its journey, and on its way, it's finding its friends, right? Mm -hmm. So let's continue on the journey, and it's finding its friends. So where is it on its journey? It's finding its friends. So continue a little bit with that, because then I want to go into, I want to talk a little bit about the rainbow children and the crystal children and the indigo children. So let's talk a little bit about its stops and its friends. Hmm, that's a great question. I, I, where do I want to go with that? He, uh, he has befriended. Uh, the fir the first person that finds him is a young rooster, Jeremy the rooster, and uh, he's very startled when suddenly this, you know, something has fallen out of the sky and pops his head out of the haystack and. Uh, they become best of friends, and Jeremy tries to teach him how to uh, act like a chicken, how to be a chicken, 
and uh, teaches him that there are so many things to be afraid of and concerned about and how to protect himself and and bless Benjamin's heart, Benjamin, our eagle. He, he knows innately that there's something wrong about this, but he... He, you know, he grows to love. He loves his friend, and so he tries his best to fit in. And uh, I don't know that I want to tell the whole whole story here, but he is. Um, he okay. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you right there. So before you continue the story, I'm going to give you the chance to think about it while I go on our little break. Okay. So you think about where you want to go, and I'm going to give us the chance to go on our wonderful commercial break and give us a chance to honor Intention Radio. So right now you're on the beautiful Intention Radio, and you're with my beautiful guest, Aless, um, God, my beautiful guest Elise Hicks, and you're with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, at carlissathorne.com. And I love Intention Radio. Please make sure you, you check out intentionradio.com. We have some beautiful, wonderful guests, and it's all about intention. And be sure to check out intentioncall.com. It's a great place if you want to join a bunch of wonderful people that have beautiful intentions, and they gather once a week, usually on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's a beautiful place to gather with some amazing people. So Elise, I've given you a chance to think about where you'd like to go. So please welcome back Elise Hicks and please now continue that wonderful story. Thank you, Carly. Well, I think I think what is most important about this story is that he he trusts himself and he ultimately finds his voice and and finds his wings without plot spoiling. But oh, he finds his wings. That's my favorite part. You, you know this. My One of my taglines is cocoon to flight. So now you really have to continue the story. He yeah. finds its wings. Well, Carly, I, I know how important the butterfly is for you. I love your story, <laughs> by the way, having read, uh, read through your website. Uh, the butterfly is also very, very important to me. And uh, we have a caterpillar that is one of his friends. That Yay. He, you know, the thing about Benjamin is he finds that he's, he is, he knows he's different. He knows that he has more of an appetite than the chickens do. And when he's tempted to, he sees what seems to be kind of a juicy looking creature. The caterpillar stands up and says, don't even think about eating me. And they begin a dialogue. And this caterpillar um, becomes a metaphor of marking his coming of age, his little chapters that he goes through in his evolution. And the caterpillars there, and then the cocoon. And uh, it, it, the butterfly is just a perfect transformation metaphor. And I think that's where we are also in humanity. I think we are, I'm so excited about this time in in history because it's, it just feels as though we are, we're in this culmination place where he, we have so many opportunities available to us and the children are showing us the, uh, the importance of being present and that, you know, their imagination, their ability to play, they're helping to remind us who we are and that we we can be and do anything in our imagination and through that we we make it real so I notice you I don't know if you've noticed every day on my wall what is the first thing I write I write today is a beautiful day and today you get to create anything that you want and I always preframe as well I don't know that most people understand this every day that we wake up we've been sleeping or gestating or we've been in a cocoon while we've been sleeping. It's no different than being in the mother's womb for nine months. That is a cocoon for nine months. So for me, everything is a cocoon. When we sleep, we're in a cocoon. When we wake up, we get to give birth to the ideas from our dreams. Everything is a cocoon. And that's what most people don't get. It's like whether it be nine months of a cocoon, sleeping, coming out of a dream as a cocoon, 
a business idea as a cocoon, our conversation as a cocoon, and I don't think people quite get the symbology of a cocoon. People only think of a cocoon, whether it be the chrysalis of a butterfly. The cocoon is the most amazing symbology that there is. And I don't think most people have thought through the symbology of the cocoon. And that's why I am so, I've had the, uh, the logo of a butterfly, like before I even, like I told you the story about when I changed my name for the number five, before I even knew that both names were number five and that my, my, uh, my name was Transformations, <laughs> before I even knew all that, I've always been mesmerized by cocoons. And the more I studied it, I was like, wow, that's why I've been so mesmerized by the word cocoon. Because we can really use that word in so many ways for everything. It is the most amazing word. And I don't think people really get the value of what we can do with a cocoon. The, just the semantics of the word cocoon. It's awesome. I don't, know, have you, I don't know if you've ever really thought of it that way. But, it, I mean, it's really magical if you really take that word and if you really think about it, how we can actually use it to transform so many things in such a powerful way. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, it's funny because when I think of my, uh, you know, my journey through childhood and and awakening, definitely, I almost feel like I, I, I mean, I I had a decent childhood, I all that, but I always had this sense that. Um, that I didn't completely belong, you know, I, I felt a bit like a foreigner and it, I have loving family and friends and all that, but I, I always sort of felt like a bit of fish out of water. My father was probably my, I didn't realize it at the time, but my best friend. When I was 12 he was given six months to live and uh, we began this journey and it's amazing that it was 12 because it's such a coming of age time life is so intense for especially for a girl I think and and so his journey of healing became my white rabbit event that uh, led me led me down the rabbit hole and dad was amazing he he would meditate and imagine that he was on a Pacific island and where the covers were not covering him, he would have a sunburn. He, he trans-channeled a 5,000-year-old Chinese monk in our living room. And, you know, that was happening in my teens. And there was a part of that that I wanted to, uh, to you know, to not tell my friends about because that meant that I was weird, but but I love that. I love that Dad was there, and he lived nine years longer, and um, I'm not sure what took me on that tangent other than the cocoon. It, when I was, I think I, cocoons are so important because they allow, we. there's a reason we put ourselves in that confined space, but for me, I, I think the journey is all about breaking free of the chrysalis and being able to fly, you know, and the butterfly is, I mean, there's a lot we can talk about with that, you know, some of us who are helpers by, in, you know, personality, and I know you you know what I'm Wait, I, wait, 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 we have to stop a minute. Okay, so have you studied Doreen Virtue's work at all? What? Doreen Virtue's work at all? Uh, not not intensely, no. Okay, so have you studied archetypes at all? Yes. Okay, do you know what you are? What I am? Uh-huh. No. Do you want to know what you are? Sure. <laughs> you, just, you just touched on it just a little bit. <laughs> okay. I, I, I told you a little bit. I, I, okay, so... You you said you're a helper. You're an angel archetype. So when you were you when you were back in the cocoon with your father, which was kind of fascinating. I was it was kind of funny because I just got this kind of mini download, and I won't I won't go. We'll have a private conversation. 
part of your archetype is the helper, which is part of your astrology part that you do. But mm -hmm. the bigger part of it is that the, the helper part is part of your angel archetype. Ah. Which angel, angel archetypes, by the way, are the, the teachers, the healers, the, the, the helpers. So I was kind of laughing as you, you touched upon it. You said the helper, and I'm going, I'm kind of getting all giddy because I'm like, I'm, I'm tapping into your, your angel and your, you know, your helper and your, your astrology. Because as we were, we were going back and, you know, in emails, and you're like, you know, I do this for a living. And I go, yeah, we're already, you know, and I'm kind of going, yeah, you know, you know. So it's kind of funny. So I'm going, we're going back and forth. And I'm, you know, most people don't know. Me and her have gone back and forth with emails, and and we had a whole hangout the other day, um, yesterday when we were, you know, we were kind of having our our pre Google hangout, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like laughing because we're, you know, yes. So that's the angel part of you, the the helper part of you. Yeah, well, that so, thank you for that. That's that's a very which is your affirmation for you is like yes, you know, is the giving part of you, the helper part of you, which is part of your astrology part of you too. Though you want to help people, and which is part, also part of your cocooning part of you, which which we can you know get into another time. But anyways, I wanted to give that to you because that is all part of your 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 heart because you're you're a beautiful, giving, warm, loving person, which is again part of your your angel part of you. Thank you, Carly. That is that's wonderful. Well, does that what, resonate for you? Can you feel that? I, I, I can. I can. I I've always I've always wanted to help, and uh, and it's but it's interesting. Back to the butterfly. Uh, you know, helpers can want to do for the other person, and. With with butterflies, if you see, you know, for a butterfly to break free of the cocoon, it it is an arduous task. That is, I mean, it's all it's known has been con being confined in this very tight little space, and it's then it's it it is being called to something greater, and it's starting to break free. Now, if we try to, you know, take scissors and help the butterfly break free. That butterfly will die because it has to, through the struggle, pump, pump the fluid out of its wings into its body, or no, I'm sorry, vice versa, out of the caterpillar body into the wings to to expand the wings, and it's all this this beautiful journey. But so many people, everyone is is a sovereign being. Everyone is co-creator and everyone has their own path that they have to take and sometimes we helpers can get in the way so we have to honor each other. So you just said something so so important. You notice my show is called Conscious Co-Creations. So three things. Everything I do is trilogies. Everything I do is three words. Every show I create and anything I do is three. So conscious co-creations. Everybody I work with, they understand that I can't do the work for them. And by the way, I have an extensive 38-question intake form. And I'm very clear with my clients. If you're not willing to do the work with me, I don't want, and, I, and I'm very, and I, I know this sounds mean, but it's like, I want people that really want to work, because I really don't want people where I'm going to do all the work for them. You have to meet me halfway. I'm willing to co-create with you. I'm not willing to do the work for you, and that's part of the problem with a lot of the spiritual community, and I, and I know a lot of people do not like when I say that, but the problem is a lot of psychics and a lot of spiritual people will tell people things that they're not ready to hear. When I was looking at your body language, I'm looking at body language, I'm looking at your eyes, I'm listening and feeling you. I won't say things to people they're not ready to hear. Because here's the problem with that. If I tell you something you're not ready to hear, you'll run and scream from your path. Just because, I'm, just because your body's telling me something, or if I'm psychic or intuitive or whatever you want to call it, and you ask me a question, I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people say, well, if you're so psychic, tell me this. Well, the problem with that is, just because I may or may not be psychic, if you tell me, if you if you ask me a question and I answer you, well, when someone tells me, if you're so psychic and tell me this, three things happen. One is, someone that asks me a question like that, first of all, 
I won't answer it because when they ask when they ask you it like that, they're already either hypercritical or they're not going to hear you anyway. They're already closed minded or shut down. And two is you're a being of free will. So if I tell you something you don't like, you're going to go change it anyway. That makes me either wrong or a bad psychic, if you will. Okay. And I never tell anyone that anyway because I don't like that language. And second of all, I have no right to screw with your path. That's not my job. My job is to help you. My job is to help guide. I'm a life coach, and I don't even use the words. There's a lot of words I don't use because of, I have different beliefs when it comes to all that kind of languaging. So basically, my job is to empower and inspire. My job is not to disempower and to screw with your path. I don't have a right to screw with people's paths. In other words, my job is to help and guide you and keep you on your path. So if I tell you things you're not ready to hear, you're going to get upset, and then you're going to change your path, which is not my job isn't to, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you get where I'm going? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Does that make sense? It you're does. being a free will. So if I tell you, if you want to, if you ask me when am I going to die, or let's say, let's say you, got, you got diagnosed with cancer, and so you come to me and say, okay, you know I have cancer, right? So if you're so psychic, tell me when I'm going to die. Well, let's say I heard in my mind that you're going to die in a month. Well, first of all, if you believe, they've actually done studies on this. They've actually done studies where, let's say they had someone had knee surgery. You, I had knee surgery and you had knee surgery. They cut both of us open. However, you get real surgery and I get fake surgery. We both come out of surgery. They don't tell either of us who had the fake and who had the real surgery. However, we both heal. Because in our minds, we both believe we have surgery. Mm -hmm. The power of faith or the power of placebo is fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't really know, like, the power of whether it be placebo, the power of chemotherapy, the power of herbs, the power of prayer, the power of flower essences, the power of homeopathy, the power of psychic, the power of intuitive. I mean, there's so many layers of mind, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and I've studied like for 20 plus years and I've had 28 surgeries so I know both sides you know what I mean so for me to be so naive or open-minded or close-minded to all the different layers or for me to say that I'm right or wrong I've seen too many things happen for me to be so judgmental or close-minded or open-minded I've just seen too many things <laughs> so I, I never presume I just I don't know I have very different mindset when it comes to all that so when some when someone comes to me and says, "If you're so psychic, tell me this," automatically know they're very close-minded. So I'm I'm not going to answer that. I'll just say, "I'm sorry, you know, I I'm, I just don't believe that we have the right to interfere in that way. I I believe you listen. I'll, I even though I may know the archetypes and I know I'll have a private conversation. However, I'm looking at your body language, and I can tell by your body language if you can hear what I have to say or if you can't. I can tell by your eyes. I, if you're if you're if you're like this, or if you're if you're you know if your heart's open, you know if your eyes are you know. But if you're cringing, or if you're saying you know, tell me, you know, I can tell if you can really hear or not. You know, if Esther's asking me, well, what do you you know, what do you think? There's a body language where you can actually really accept, or if you're really nervous and freaking out. Because I had a client who had a really massive diagnosis, but she was really open and wanting to hear alternatives. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't all freaked out about, and she's doing really well. There's a difference. There's a different energy. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So I, I just triggered yeah. the camera. I hit the table. Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, did, I was did you see a wave? Huh. <laughs> it was like we just, did, we just did a body wave. <laughs> yeah. Well, I agree. I agree, and I think uh, psychics, counselors, have. I just think we need, we need to get more integrity when it comes to all that. Absolutely. Like just because we can doesn't mean we ought to sometimes. Right. I, think not, I don't I don't believe in taking money just to take money. I, I that That's just my personal opinion. I don't want to make a quick buck just to make a quick buck when it comes to life coaching or counseling. I just have a very different... I'm really funny when it comes to that. Because to me, counseling... I don't look at spiritual counseling a spiritual counseling when it comes to that I, ha I have I, ha I hold myself to very very high standards when it comes to that kind of counseling mm. does that yeah. make sense 
yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I think as counselors, we need to be mindful of whether or not one of our, our clients or customers or patients is trying to give their power away yet again. Exactly. So, you, hit the, you hit it right there. That was very key right there. We, we, need to, we, need to, we need to own our power. We can't give our power away. And we have to cue in to when our clients are asking us, are they asking for help to work with us? Or are they just saying, give me the answers, give, us, give me the solutions? Right. Absolutely. Or just yeah. give me another card reading. I want another card reading. Because I do readings, too. And it's like, I'm not just going to give you the reading and the solution. Are you going to work with me on the solution? Because tarot cards or angel readings or I don't care what type of readings you're doing are not the solution. They're going to maybe tap into your subconscious and help you. They're mm -hmm. not the answer. Because I can give you a reading every single day, and your subconscious is going to constantly change it. So that is not the answer. And you can't do one every day anyway. I know people who want a reading every single day. It's like, no. It's like, that mm -hmm. is not the answer. No, 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 no. It's like, if, you want, if they want that kind of insight, then meditate every day. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to do a little break again because we've been, you and I could talk forever. So. Anyways, we are on Intention Radio, and we are here with the beautiful and insightful Elise Hicks. And by the way, you can, I, I encourage everyone to go get her book. And um, I, Elise, share with us the title of your book again and your website, please. Uh, the book is Wings, The Journey Home. Our website is wingsthejourneyhome.com. We're also on Facebook, so please come and find us on Facebook. And uh, we love our fans on Facebook. It's also available on Amazon. Yay! Yeah. Please come see her on Amazon as well. Amazon. And I think we're also going to offer um, at least giving away one book. So um, at the end of the show, please tune in for that as well. And you are on intentionradio.com. And please be sure to check out the intentioncall.com. It's a beautiful hangout once a week. Not a Google Hangout. It's a group gathering on attentioncall.com, and it's usually 3 p.m., and please check out their website. And you're with your host, CarlyAlyssaThorne.com, and you're going to be um, hanging out for the rest of this call with Elise Hicks and Carly Alyssa Thorne. So please welcome back Elise Hicks, and we're going to wrap up the rest of the show with the two of us talking more about spirituality and uh, just consciousness, and we're going to have some more fun. We're going to play more, because playtime is very important, because we adults forget how to play, right? That, that well, that is, that is, <laughs> except, okay, an exception to that rule. Yeah. We at least do not forget how to play, because we yeah. play often. We laugh. Laughter is important. Although I wish the cat would come out to play. I miss seeing her. Oh, no, I she know. Normally he was hanging what? out by your right by your shoulder yesterday. Shall I go get him? Yes, go get the cat. Go get him. I'll be, you just chat amongst yourself. I will chat amongst myself. I'm good at chatting amongst. Okay, my other co-host Rick would say that Carly is very good at chatting amongst herself. Right, Rick? <laughs> Rick is not here right now, but Rick would say that Carly Alyssa Thorne is really, really, really good at chatting amongst yourself. And I bet other people would say that too. And I love, love, love kitty cats. So, and I know Lynn O'Connell would say that too, that I love, 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 love kitty cats. And I know that um, other people would say that too, especially since my initials, Carly Lissa Thorne, spell out cat. So that would be a, a, just a little hint that Carly likes cats. And let's see what else. And I hear the kitty cat coming. Yes. Look. Uh, speaking of cats. Oh, you gotta see this beautiful cat. Part. He is. If uh, anyone loves cats, you, this cat is gorgeous. By the way, the beautiful, beautiful is, kitty cat. This is Romeo. Look at Romeo, cat. Lynn. This is for you. My friend Lynn is fostering eight <laughs> kittens right now. Oh, actually, seven kittens right now, and she's got two cats of her own. Rose. Oh, look at you. You're so beautiful, and you've got blue eyes. Sweet. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, 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 beautiful, beautiful kitty. He's just playing his ragdoll nest. 
Oh, <laughs> the are known Hi, for their Romeo. You're so beautiful. Thank you for joining us. Actually, when I used to do, you'll love this. When I used to do Reiki, this is eons ago when I had my healing center. I used to have to close the healing room because this, this you got your okay, okay. Imagine the setting. This room had crystals, had a bay window, and in the bay window had a huge crystal singing bowl, and then behind the singing bowl was loaded with crystals, just all crystals, and then it had a huge um. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, what do you call it? Massage table, right? And underneath the massage table was more singing bowls and more crystals. And then on the side walls of the room was just chairs for people to sit and meditate. The cat would climb, would sneak in the room, even though the door was closed. It knew how to open the door. It paw the door open or open the cl would climb on the door and open the handle so it would sneak in the room. It would climb underneath the massage table to be around the crystals. And then any time someone was getting energy healing done, it would climb underneath the massage table or would sneak and jump on top, on top of the table to sit on top of their heart chakra so it could sit there and get attuned too. Awesome. It knew. It knew. And then my cats knew that I would do energy came out of my hands. So it butt it would butt my hands, so I'd give them healing energy out of my hand, or would climb to my third eye. Oh, it knew exactly where to go. Every night, it would come and it would come up to my third eye, or it butt my hand. Like, please give me more energy, please. It was crazy. All my cats did that. Yeah. There. Well, you know, I read that cats initially help the physicians in Egypt. Oh they, yes. They see. They work with energy, and they love the energy. Oh, they love it. They love it. They love, so do horses and dogs, by the way. Horses love third eye to third eye contact, and so do dogs. Most people mm -hmm. don't know that's what they're doing because they don't really, you know. It's kind of interesting. I can talk to you about this because you're a cat lover. But I don't. I don't go around telling all my clients and other people. Oh yeah, just go third eye to earth, third eye with your dog and your horse. They're like, what? What? <laughs> However, mm -hmm. there's a site that you would love. It's called. Um, Learn IET for pets. I'll have to send that to you. Oh, if you stand, if you stand a dog or a cat on their hind legs, their chakra system lines up like us humans. Cool. Only it only works with dogs, horses, and cats, though. So okay. their alignment is the same. Is I actually type it in the. I'll send it to you via email today. Uh, yeah. Anyways, it's the exact same alignment as uh, as. As us, uh, so it's different than Reiki, though. Um, so Reiki, as you know, I'm a lineage. I'm a master in Reiki and two lineages. IET is called Integrated Energy. Anyway, this is for everybody. It's called Integrated Energy Therapy. It's it's a uh, www.iet.com, and then there's a section that's just for pets. IET for pets. Unfortunately, though. You can't take the IET for pets unless you take the IET basics first. You don't have to take any advanced levels or become a master teacher. You do have to take, in order to do the pets, you have to learn the basics first. And if you learn the basics, then you can take the course for pets. And I encourage anyone to do it. It is amazing. And then you can do it on your family and friends and your pets. And it's not expensive. It's just a real basic course. And I'm telling you, you'll they love it. It's Reiki plus. It's beyond. It's amazing. If if you like basic energy healing and you liked Reiki and you love your animals, you will absolutely love this integrated energy therapy. So that's awesome. a little tip on anyone who loves energy healing. Awesome, awesome. There you go. You said I, know we did, I know we totally deviated from our subject, except that she brought the cat out, and um, that just made me think of cat loving and yeah. animal loving. And human loving, <laughs> <laughs> which and they help us play, and that they was the topic. Do. And our topic was playing. Oh, let's talk a little bit about children, because I, I know you were talking about possibly doing a children's book. Well, this, you were. Actually, you were telling me you were thinking about doing a children's book, were you not? Actually, Wings is. For I know, but you were also talking about doing a specific children's book. You were telling me about that. I know, I know your book is a children's book. You were t when we talked last time. You were telling me about thinking about doing a more cartoonish or more more specific children's book. You were telling me about that. You don't remember that, do you? I do not. This is a long time ago. 
funny. That, that is very funny. Um, yeah, no, actually, Romy is going to be the star of the next book. That's uh, what you were telling me about. Hat in the Window. Ah, that's what you were telling me about. Okay, never mind. Yeah, but that's okay. About that. Okay, talk about that. You said something so, so key just now, though, and while you were sharing about the website, uh, cats, dogs, and horses are the three species that chose to domesticate with humans. Do you know about, have you discovered conversations with cats? And yes. Dog and dog and conversations with horse? Yes. Carly, I love, I love those books. I know, I think I awesome. William bought Conversations with Cat for me for my birthday one year, and one of my favorite captions is like interviews of the cat of the feline uh, council, and you just know that these are the cats are answering these questions. Oh and God! I think my favorite, my favorite one. There were a couple of favorites, but one was, "What do you really think about dogs?" <laughs> and, the cat, and the cat says, we honor dogs for their role that they play as man's best friend, that they really have a special relationship with humans. And it's distinct from what cats have. It is. It's very different. Cats mm -hmm. are very different than dogs. It's totally, it's apples and oranges. You can't Absolutely. even compare the two. Absolutely. And that's okay. It's completely different. I'm yep. a cat lover. I love dogs. However, I'm a cat lover. Yeah, and I am especially too. because I travel a lot, and I can leave cats with my friends, and they can take care of dogs. Are like having children. You can't leave a dog. I know. They're, I always feel guilty, a little bit right. guilty around dogs. Like they, you know, they're they're I mean, like having children. But the but also the cat says now. So we honor the dogs, but given that they are pack oriented animals, and we are solitary felines, they make us a little bit nervous. If we can find a perch high enough <laughs> that we feel secure, we like to play games on them. <laughs> now, uh, here's another thing. I also believe in having animals in pairs. Even though cats are solitary animals, I will never ever have animals unless I have two. I always have two dogs, I always have two cats. Therefore, if I'm gone for the day, they have someone to squabble with, they have someone to play with, they have someone to sleep with, so I always have two. Even though they're solitary animals, they do like to have someone to fight with and clean and play with. That's just, you know, me. Anyways, you know, I can't believe how fast this time has kind of went. So I do want to, we're, we're getting right here at the end time with. So I'd love for you to... Let the audience end with something that you'd love to end with. So what would you like people, I want people to get to know you a little bit. So what is something you'd love the audience to know about you? Who is Elise? Like what is, to tell people something that, you know, something that is, what is one of your passions? Like what do you love to do? Oh, what do I love to do? I, lo I love to read. I love to study. I, I'm the eternal studier. I could spend... I think in past lives I was a monk because I, <laughs> I would rel relish the time to be able to just read and it feels like such a luxury these days. I love my friends. I love spending time with them. I love having enlightening conversations and I love the thought that we are, that we're all making a difference here. We're all co-creating the world that, you know, what would heaven look like? To each of us. What a fun, fun thought. And each of us, and the more we contemplate that, the more we create it. The more we focus on that, the more we're creating it. I, I, my father, who lived nine years longer than he was supposed to, gave me for my 18th birthday, he hired an astrologer to do my chart for my birthday. And that began my love affair with astrology. So I also am an astrologer. And um, I kept that very closeted for many years because for some reason I thought that that made me weird. But um, I am now out of the closet and I love the counseling. But I'm very much a, more of a quantum physics astrologer. I don't believe that anything is set in stone and we co-create our lives. So, you know, when we get a reading, we can treat it kind of like a weather report 
And, you know, maybe it's a good idea to know if it's raining outside so you can prepare and take a raincoat or whatever, but um, n nothing is fatalistic in my mind. And uh, anyway, Carly, thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate this time with you. And you're right, it went so fast. I look forward and, um, and actually, um, do you share a little bit? You said you're thinking about doing the next one. So do you share a little bit about the next one? The next, the next book? Yes. You, you're, you're talking about you're doing the, we, we just talked about it a second ago. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, Cat in the Window, it's, it is inspired by Romeo, our cat Romeo, <clears throat> and uh, we haven't actually started writing it yet. No, I know, I know you haven't. Just you know, this is here. Think about this. And sharing Romeo now, you're actually putting into the ethers the beginnings of a blueprint that hasn't arrived yet. I love it. Okay, all right. So we are inspiring the blueprint. We're staying it out loud to the universe that Romeo is now beginning. Okay. All right. Well, it is, it, it, given that we haven't actually written it, <laughs> I hesitate to talk too much about it. No, no. I'll just say, so I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm inviting you to put into ethers that, um, that book number two is in the process of being inspired. How about that? Okay. Okay. Well, it, and you don't, have to, you don't have to give details because I know I know you don't want to give details because you don't want anyone else to go run with it. I just want you. I'm giving you. I'm giving you the inspiration to put into ethers that Romeo two is in the process of being okay. created. How yeah. about that? Okay, that's. And right. you put it in your own words. You put it in your own words. Okay. Well, with your permission, Ms. Ms. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah, cat in the window is definitely in formation. Um, uh, in my mind though, wings the journey home, the animated feature film is is uh, that's that's really what's next. For Yay! Us. And yeah, because it's you know, and you, I have a copy for you by the way. Yay. I can't believe that it, you know, we started, we talked about this interview, <laughs> you know, it's been so busy since a month ago when we put this on the calendar. I know. And I can't believe we've actually been talking on Facebook for like eons. Anyway. I know. I so know. anyways, thank you, as Lord. usual, everybody, I am just so excited to bring you valuable content and thank you so much for joining me, Elise. And as you all know, I absolutely love, love, love feedback. And you've been here on Intention Radio with CarlissaThorn.com and our beautiful, wonderful, insightful guest, Elise Hicks, and her beautiful partner, William Hicks. And you can find her. Tell us where we can find you again, my love. WingsTheJourneyHome.com. You can find me on Facebook. I'm Elise Hicks and William Hicks. And uh, let's the uh, wings is on Amazon.com, and uh, that's yeah, I, I think that's it. And I, as you, as everyone knows, I put together a beautiful post with the has the embedded video, has the embedded podcast. So you'll have all the links to find Elise everywhere you could possibly imagine, as well as you can find me at CarlyLissaThorn.com. So for tonight, I leave you. However, I will be seeing you very soon again. This particular episode will air on intentionradio.com. I air every Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And for tonight, I leave you. And thank you so much. I look forward to all your valuable feedback. Good night, everyone. And good night, Elise. Thank you so much for joining me. Good night, Carly. Thank you.